Now we're ready to map our field data that are tied to real-world coordinates inside ArcGIS desktop. Super! First thing to do is to start a blank arc map session. Second thing is to add data. Navigate to where your data is stored. The first thing I want to bring in are my waypoints. There are my waypoints. Let's go ahead and label those waypoints. Okay, I want to label those based on the ident field. These were the waypoint names, the ident field. Let's go ahead and make that yellow, bold, and maybe bump up the size a bit. Label all those features, and there we've got them. Let's also make the features yellow themselves. Excellent. Well, it's really nice to have a base map, though, isn't it, behind your data. Fortunately, nowadays, ArcGIS Desktop is tied to ArcGIS Online, so I can go ahead and add a base map that's actually sitting online. Let's select the Bing Maps Aerial. Great, there it is. Let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. Looking good. Now I'm going to bring in my track points. Turn off my waypoints. Maybe symbolize my track points a bit differently. I think I want to make those white. Maybe just a little bit bigger. Okay, there's my track points. And then thirdly, my track line. Can't see that very well, so I think I'll make it a bit thicker and make it a light gray. Excellent. So there's my track line with my track points. Remember, this is the breadcrumb trail that the GPS dropped virtually while I was walking. I started right here, walked to the end of those trees, walked around this way, and around over here. And there are my waypoints. Let's go ahead and change the base layer. That's easy, easily done. I'm going to add base map. And this time I want to select, how about a topographic base? Ah, very nice. There's the Esri building, there's the cul-de-sac and the street, the parking lot, and the trees that I collected. Another thing I can do is I can use the effects toolbar to swipe. So I can see the differences between whatever base maps you've got. In my case, a Bing Maps aerial and a topographic. This is particularly helpful if you've got base maps of two different years, so you can compare change over time. What are the advantages to doing it this way? In other words, you could have mapped these points and track lines in an online environment, in ArcGIS Online. What we've done is we've mapped it here in ArcMap, which is running in Arc, as part of ArcGIS Desktop. What are the advantages here? Well, they're both valid approaches. These three layers that I have here, let's turn off the base for a, for a moment. These track points, these waypoints, and this track line, I have full control over these. They're local on my computer. I can change the symbology, for example, now that it's local. I can change it to for example, if I wanted the larger trees, whether girth or height, to be in a larger symbol, I could do that. I could also change the labeling and stack the labels, labeling them whether they're in good condition or not good condition. I could also label them based on tree species or tree height. In short, I have more power now that the data are stored right here locally. And also I have more power because I'm inside the desktop GIS environment where I have a lot more tools as you can see here. Again, both the desktop and the online approaches are valid. The, the approach should be use the most appropriate tool for the job. The last order of business is to go ahead and save this map document. Again, navigate to the location in my case, I've stored it in a GPS folder, and I've got it 
as part of the GPS to GIS movie. I'm going to call it Esri Broomfield Tree Mapping dot MXD. That's my map document. Great, now I can come back to this and here's my name right here at the top of my ArcMap session. In short, that's all there is to it.